Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about Get By Roll in Playwright. So Get By Roll is a recommended way in Playwright, this is a Playwright documentation, to locate the web element. So here's what documentation says. To make tests resilient, we recommend prioritizing user visible attributes and explicit contracts such as Get By Roll. Uh, but if you are transitioning from uh, other frameworks, for example, Cypress or Selenium, uh, there is no such a thing as get by role in there. And it can be confusing how to use get by role, right? So first of all, what is get by role? So role is uh, related to area labels or area attributes uh, for uh, computer assistance uh, to uh, read the web applications. For example, people who cannot see, they use the assistive technologies to read through the text and that way navigate uh, on the screen. Click on the button or navigate to the menu or select the form or fill out application or text field and so on. And the names for those area labels is what the roles are in the playwright. So how to use this guy? We're going to talk about and I will show you the example on our playground application. I set up quick uh, project over here. Uh, which roles are available? So let me call this guy first uh, page dot get by role. This is our locator and which roles are available. Just hover over and here is the list of all available roles that you can use. Alert, alert dialog, application, article and so on. So, well, quite a big list. Honestly, you don't need all of those. In your typical automation scenarios, you will use five, maybe six of the roles. For example, uh, role checkbox is to select the checkbox or a role button is to interact with the buttons or the text box, text box role to use for um, input fields. Any input field, you want to type something in the input field, use the text box. Or, for example, heading. Heading is to get the access to the uh, H1 tag of the header of the page. Or another example, row or cell. So row is the, uh, the entire row in the web table and cell is the cell in the web table. And uh, what else? We have a radio button somewhere. Here we go. This is for the radio buttons. And, uh, you know, I believe it's almost almost it. Maybe list items. So if you have a list and also link. So link is any anchor tag uh, hyperlink on the page that you want to click. You can call with the link role to interact with it. But you see, it's kind of uh, not unique at all because when we use CSS selector, we can select the unique identifier or CSS that can target it. So how to use role with something else to make it unique? Uh, for that, you need to use a second visible argument that you see on the page, which is visible text related to this element. And using both of those, role plus visible text, this is how you create a very resilient, nice, uh, reliable locator using get by role. So let me show you the example. Let's say that we want to uh, click on this forms menu item. So how can you inspect and find what is this? So I make the right click and look, this is the anchor tag over here. Anchor is a link. So we can call this menu item just by the link and by the text. Going back and get by role, I called link. So also IntelliSense and VS Code gives us other ideas with L what is available. So we select link and then the second argument. Uh, this is the name and the name is forms. That's it. And I called click command and let's run this. Running this test, browser opened and forms was clicked successfully. So now let's click on the second one, which is form layouts on the second page, going back. Okay, I'm copying this, pasting it right here and form layouts like this, running this and form layouts was open. So let's check another example with different roles. For example, let's click on this guy, check me out. So this is a checkbox, right? So let's use a get by role and label for this checkbox to interact with this checkbox. So pretty easy. Again, await page get by role and then I call a role of checkbox and then provide the name that is reflected on the page name 
which is check me out. And for the checkbox, we use a method check instead of click. And one little detail is just for this particular test application, uh, the actual checkbox is hidden in the properties of the app. So I should use force true uh, just to bypass uh, the inactivity of this element. Running the test, going back, you see the checkbox is selected. What else? So let's try, for example, fill something into this uh, input field and click on the button send. We also can use get by role uh, unless the text that you're trying to interact is unique. Otherwise, you need to use uh, different techniques and I'll talk about it just in a second. So for example, we have a uh, label over here displayed uh, the placeholder recipients, right? So we can use it as a, a name for our text box to interact with. So same thing, we go in back, uh, I type a wait page get by role. And this time we interact with input fields for input fields, it's gonna be a text box like this. And the name will be um, uh, recipient ends and we want to fill something uh, John Smith all right let's run it and John Smith is entered over here and the last thing let's click on send button just to show you a final example with the roles await page uh, get by role button is uh, you know is the most typical because you have buttons uh, everywhere on your application so the role button would be the most typical get by role that you're going to use in your scripts and name and uh, the text that is visible over there is sent uh, going back is sent and running the test Oh, hold on, I need to click on this, click like this, running the test, uh, going back and you see the send is highlighted so it means that it was actually clicked. So that's it guys, so simple, that's how would you use roll and it takes some time, right? So you need to experiment a little bit and try which role works, which one is not and when possible try to use get by role, you get used to it. You will find that you use like five, six, maybe seven roles at maximum in your test, considering that long list that, you know, in most of the cases, you're not gonna use it. Um, it makes your test more resilient, more stable and easier to read. Look at these locators. They very easy to read from the code. So you even don't need to create a separate constant and save this locator to a constant. You can read just button, send, text box, recipients pretty straightforward. And also you can combine this locator with uh, regular locators with CSS and IDs. For example, you can chain two methods together. Locator, for example, I don't know, five form by ID or something, and then get by role and find some input fields. Or the other way around, you can find uh, the table, for example, get by role, and then find some other value or some other property uh, using a regular locator. Because sometimes, uh, it is not not the case. For example, look at this application. If you want to click on this icon, you can't use get by role technically, right? Because this is just an icon, you need to find some ID. Or if you need to click on this drop down, technically you can click on this but get by role button and select the uh, text light. Probably it would work. But in this case, you would tie it to a test data. You don't want this because if the value will be different over here and you will run your script again, then your script gonna fail because the value inside of the dropdown will be different, will be uh, dark and not light. In this case, probably eh, it's not a good idea to use the text displayed in the dropdown as your name locator inside of the get by role. Better to use a regular locator and uh, target this dropdown just by CSS selector without assignment of the text. Other than that, if you see the static text on the page, it is considered a very good approach to use the static text, get by role, and that way interact with your application. All right, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I will be looking for those and will answer on any of them. Uh, if you like the video, subscribe, put the like, and see you in the next video.